Hello and welcome back once again to the Pro Tipster Football Show. What a weekend that was. The Liverpool Derby contained controversy and a smiling big Sam. Serie A witnessed none of the top four scoring a single goal. And Jose Mourinho sang as I drive my baby in my magic bus as he tried to bring a halt to Pep Guardiola's freight train of Manchester City. Needless to say, he didn't. I'm joined in the studio by Pro Tipster Dan. How are you, Dan? Uh, not doing too badly. I'm, I'm completely lo- I'm stumped by the song this week. So. Ah, you don't get the song. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Maybe, maybe it'll find a way uh, into your head before we finish. I'll reveal at the end who it is. That's a clue. Before we get into the football, then, um, don't be shy about getting in touch with us. If you have any betting questions at all, you can get me on Twitter, Pro Tipster IRL, or Dan as Pro Tipster Dan. Martin's not with us. He's uh, snowed in. No, he's probably mid-flight somewhere. So, hello, Martin. And, uh, yeah, pl- uh, don't be shy about getting in touch. We'll answer any of your betting questions that we have. And, of course, you can listen to us on the Pro Tips, the blog site. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, and all of those other Android pod catchers as well. Uh, Dan, let's get into the football then. We picked a couple from the upcoming Premier League matches. Uh, we want to start off with um, uh, Burnley and Stoke. Um, yeah, Burnley, man, they're doing so well, aren't they? Seventh in the table, who'd have thunk it? It's brilliant. Level on points is first. <laughs> um, they're unbelievable this year. I mean, I've got my notes here. One loss in seven games. Uh, but they don't score many. They've had eight home games this season. They've scored six times. Mm. You know, it's, that's going to be the one, once, once people figure out how to, how to, how to break down that defence, that's going to be their downfall. Yeah. And you could see them, well, hopefully not, but you could see them slipping down quickly if they, if they don't get goals. Yeah, it is a, you know, if you're grinding out 1-0 wins and you start conceding one goal here and there, yeah. it's, it's going to be a problem, but Stoke, one win in six, um, I've got in the last five home games, I've conceded 16 goals. Um, I don't think Burnley will be adding too many to that, but, um, surely Mark Hughes is a man in trouble. It's something I'd written down for the topics actually, Mark Hughes. I have Mark Hughes, he's an awful manager, isn't he? He has a total of 576, 76, total of 576 games. He's won 222. The win rate, his win rate is only, is 38.5% out of 500, almost 600 football matches. That's, that's about average for a Premier League manager, I think, but. Mm. I, I don't like Mark Hughes. I've never liked his teams. I've not liked him since he was Blackburn manager. <laughs> He's an ass. So, so, I mean, I apologise for, for, you know, like... He's not this fans. one. <laughs> I apologise to fans of Mark Hughes, but I don't like him and I think he's an ass. Whereas Sean Dyche, a bit more of an up-and-comer, isn't he? Mm. Um, I don't, Hughes, I, Hughes's football has never gone anywhere. Like, for such a great... I suppose it's that cliche that great, great footballers don't make good managers and I suppose he's kind of proven it because there's just... All of his teams have lacked something. They've lacked the Mark Hughes player. You know, there's no... And they've all been like, um, kick them while they're down kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, this Stoke side's got Ryan Shaw crossing it, you know. And, <sighs> he's, I'm just not convinced. Mm. And, and, and like, you look at the players he's brought in, and... I mean, Super Motin's okay. Shirdan sure, Shakiri I expected far better from. Um... I think I've moaned about Shakiri before. And, and it's, it's like he brings in players and they spend a load of money and then you don't hit, like, like a, in, 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 in Buller, in Buller, I can't even I thought you were going to say Natalie and Brulia there. No, <laughs> I'd, I'd be well impressed if we bought her in. Yeah, ja, uh, Janet, it was the Italian lad in Brulla, the right. midfielder. The, the, this is how well he did. He, they spent eight, ten, eight figure sum on him and I can't pronounce his surname. <laughs> you know, um, because he didn't do anything. He yeah, didn't. I thought Hesse was going to do something as well. He's done that. And Shakiri is a huge disappointment. You yeah, know? they had Bojan, who was all right for a while, and now he's gone. Yeah, he got rid of him as well. Yeah. You know, it's <coughs> Ibrahim Afele, Bruno Martinsindi. The list is quite long. What would you go for here? Though? I'll give you the odds first. So, uh, at, at, at the moment of the recording, there are Burnley to win is 2.29, 3.16 for the draw, and 3.47 for Stoke to win away. I'm tempted by the Burnley win. Mm. Tempted by the Burnley win, but um, I'll be looking at goals as well. Um, under two and a half goals, I think it's got to be a shout. Uh, I didn't I write down what unders was. Over is two point four seven. So what? Yeah, no, so it's going to be about one point five, one point six, yeah. which is about where it should be. Um, that'd be more of a banker bet. But yeah, I'd go for Burnley to win. I, th- I think Stoker in a lot of trouble, and you know, I could see Hughes getting sat. You know. If they, if they look, if uh, it looks like they're going to endanger their Premiership stay, their Premier League stay, Premiership ending in 2002. 
the Premier League stay, then um, I can see Stoke going, nah, it's time to move on. Yeah, and they're going to have to do it before January as well. I think there's going to, like, like I said, there's going to be a couple more heads rolling before January comes around because people are going to want to get their transfers in. You know? Mm. Uh, let's move on then to uh, 16th place. Newcastle are taking on 10th place. Everton. So, uh, Big Sam, he's, uh, he's started the revival. They beat Liverpool 1-1 one, one all in the derby. <laughs> and uh, uh, I found a stat here. Newcastle have drawn the first half and five out of eight at home. Um, and Everton had drawn the first half against uh, teams in, in the bottom but, uh, five times as well. But that, that's a stupid stat. Um, yeah, Newcastle. I know we, we spoke about this morning in our video. Um, uh, a bit more about Everton, please, Dad. Um, okay, <clears throat> so... Everton have only got one away win in 2017. <laughs> you know, one Premier League away win in 2017. Uh, their last uh, Premier League away win, I think, was in uh, April. That's their only one this year. But they're three unbeaten. Um, Sam has come in, and I don't know. I, the players are playing for him. I don't think they were playing for Unsworth. They certainly weren't playing for Koeman. <laughs> and, like, he's brought players back in from the cold, like Uma Nias. And you know, you go, you go into Newcastle and they were really on the slide. No wins in seven. One win in four at home. And they've scored four in their last five home games. And two of them were in their last game. Yeah. And, okay, they were unlucky. Unlucky to lose to Leicester. But, um, I think, I think there's something good. I, I, I think Rafa's gonna go. Um, and I don't think, I don't think he's gonna be handed out by the fans. I think Rafa's gonna quit because he's gonna see he's, he's onto a knowing situation. You know, you look at the, um, the problems they've got off the pitch. You look at the problems they've got with regards to um, the sale of the club, with the transfer window upcoming. If I was Rafa, I'd be going off. You know, screw this for a game of monkeys off. off. Mm. Ski guys, I'm getting him. <laughs> There's my Eric Cartman impression. <laughs> if 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 only they could get that the sale done before January, never gonna happen. Be laughing. No, it's gonna never be gonna happen in a bajillion years. Yeah. I've um I've written books about. I, I literally have written a book about the side of a club, <laughs> and it, it, you know, it just doesn't work like that. And yeah. this is a relatively easy one because Mike Ashley owns like the, the most of it, and but Ashley just Ashley's not going to let it go for cheap, and he's already like turned down two bids. Immediately, yeah. you know, it's been the same sort of price, but just how it's being paid, mm. and um, you know. They're, they're not, not going to get it done. Not what would you go for? Would you would, would you go for Everton to win? Let me give you the odds. So 2.37 Newcastle, 3.24 a draw, 3.19 for Everton to win. 3.19. Um, I'd be tempted, but it's this one Premier League away win in 2017. Yeah. That, that bothers me. Yeah. But, of course, records are made to be broken. They do look better under Sam. They were somewhat lucky to get a draw at Anfield, but St. James's Park is a different proposition against this side. Mm. That are, I, I guess their confidence might be a bit low. Well, you know, I was watching the the the, the Leicester match, and they they did kind of pull together to come back, and then they screwed it up. You know, they were they were on the front foot, and then it looked like they were going to win, not Leicester, and then and it was the own goal. Um, I saw something interesting from the home the home their, their overall form. Newcastle is terrible. One win. Three draws, six losses in the previous ten. But at home, they have five wins, one draw, four losses. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would actually make, make Newcastle favourites here. I think, I think against Liverpool, Everton was that that result is just undeserved. They were awful, so they were. They were barely out of their own half. They were just terrible, and uh, they should Liverpool should have won four, five, six nil at at the very least. Should have, would have, could have. Oh no, I know, of course, but that this this is typical Liverpool, you know. They had they 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 go on good runs. They when when they need to deliver, they don't. They'll always let you down. You know, Liverpool, sport in Liverpool is a good life lesson. It means you don't set your your goals for life very high, you know, because just it, life is just one crushing defeat or draw to Everton. That's inevitable anyway. <laughs> you know, um. Uh, so wait, what are you going for? Um. I'm going to go for an Everton win, but it it wouldn't be a lot of money on it. It would be like a a small punt. Like well, a, the handicap then, plus 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 zero point two five and one point eight six. Yeah, I, that that that's a, doesn't appeal to me. No, too little. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. 
Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to protipster.com for more details. Let's move on then to uh, London Derby. Uh, West Ham versus Arsenal. West Ham 18th, Arsenal in 5th. Um, I looked into the head-to-head stuff here because, you know, it's a London Derby and in the previous five games uh, at home for West Ham, okay, they're in a new stadium. They've conceded 16 goals. They haven't won a game in five. They've drawn one, lost four when Arsenal come visiting. I think West Ham have got to take a lot from that win over Chelsea. Um, just to... We didn't watch it. We kind of watched Martin watching it, didn't we? <laughs> uh, to, to set the scene, um, we started in a restaurant in place called uh, uh, Stjerk. It's down in the mountains here in Poland. And then uh, we were in a, in a car with um, Doma Arigato and Mr. Roboto driving. And um, you, you had to be at the Christmas party to understand that joke. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Martin was getting more and more excited as the match went on because he couldn't believe they were hanging on for a one win. Um, I think I think they're going to take a lot from that. And Arsenal only scraped a draw against Southampton. You know they, they were lucky to get that draw. Um, Giroud, who's got an astonishing record of scoring in the last ten minutes of games at the moment. Um, uh, but were they luckier, or does it show resolve and backbone? Because I've spoken about this before. Maybe this Arsenal team actually do have backbone for the first time in pff, what eight, ten years. No. No, Dan's making faces at me here, lads. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, th- I think this kind of game, if that, I think this kind of game will be the test of it because if they come into this game and, you know, scrape another 1-1 draw, then maybe I'd say, mm, I don't know about that. Mm. But if they came back and just wiped the floor of West Ham. I saw another stat, um, from the weekend from Arsenal. Alexis Sanchez gave away the ball 30, 32 times in the game. Oh. A Premier League record, second in the Premier League for giving away the ball in the game to Alexis Sanchez against Manchester United where he gave it away 34 times. No way. That's not... Yeah. What's he playing at? He's giving the ball away. That's what he's playing at. <laughs> um, but, well, well, have you gone for Anton in here? I haven't, no. Um, Everything's priced to last. I'll give you the odds here. West Ham to win 5.32. A draw 4.15. Arsenal to win 1.63 which is awful low. I think you probably get West Ham plus one at about 1.6, 1.7. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. Might be worth it. Mm. Might be worth it. Mm. You might be one to look for the lineups to see who's fit. Um, because it might be a, a lot, it might be, yeah. cause West Ham have got injuries all over the shop and if they've got players coming back. Yeah. Overs is priced very low. Overs is 1.69 at the minute and it's because, it's not because a lot of games are going overs for far both teams at the minute. But it's because of the, the, the derby record, you know, five out of the mm. last, uh, five of the last five have, have all been overs. Like I said, like I said at the start of this little section, the West Ham can see the 16 against Arsenal in the last five matches there, so that's probably why. Um, uh, so we mentioned Chelsea there. Oh, I want, I want to talk about Chelsea for a second because, um, Conte's come unstuck now a few times away from home. Uh, we have Crystal Palace, West Ham and Roma. And like, okay, Roma, Roma, they were really, really bad against Roma, but we can kind of let them off because it's a Champions League match. And, you know, they had pretty much, it never looked like Chelsea weren't going to qualify, let's be honest, you know. But, you know, maybe this, maybe, maybe it's the London Derby thing with Conte because he drew and lost against Arsenal last year in the league and in the cup. And he lost away to Spurs last year as well. So what, what, what's he got against London teams that he can't, he can't figure them out? I'm not sure. I think this, there might be a complacency issue maybe. Because you know, they're expected to beat teams like West Ham. Mm. And they're expected. <laughs> Everyone's expected to beat like West Ham though. And, and <laughs> maybe it's an issue where like players just aren't, are just going through the motions a little bit. I don't know. Do you think they, um, they don't get that it's a derby? Maybe, maybe. Um, too, much, too many Johnny Foreigners. <laughs> controversial. Um, no. Brugge, it, Brugge. It. Yes. <laughs> I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna do it. I'm not even gonna do it. I'm, I'm just, it's that second season syndrome for Chelsea. Like, they won the title under Mourinho, the second season they were. Yeah. To use the, the, the word of the weekend, gash. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, Conte, um, Chelsea under Conte last season just ripped to the title. And this year, they're just nowhere near as good. And I think this year, the, the, 
the last time it was Mourinho lost the plot a little bit. You know, it was all that stuff with it over Carnero. Mm. And um, this year, I think, I think the difference might be like, like Conte bombing out Diego Costa and bringing, I mean, is a good player, but it's only got Morata, you know, mm. after him. Yeah. They don't really have any, like, well, bat shui, but, you know, no. it's not great. No, it's not. And yeah, okay, they play this strikeless formation, but I, I think they don't have quite enough players to slot in when, when players are missing. Cause you look at, I, I look at some of the second string players, and this is the difference. I look at Man City, like, Man City, um, like, 1-1 at the break, brought on Gundogan for a company. Yeah. You know, it's just like, wow. Yeah. And then they took the, they took the lead and they took off, um, Jesus for, um, Mangala and mm-hmm. switched it back. And it's just like, Guardiola's got, like, so much depth of talent there. They can just, you know, he, he can switch things as he needs to. But isn't, isn't this the whole reason that Conte's fallen out with those upstairs? Because yeah, he, he, he's been given players he didn't want. The players he wanted he couldn't get. You know, and he's just been, yeah, he's been forced to take players and put, and put them into the team even. He doesn't want. So who, who, who do you, who do you put in that, uh, little basket players he doesn't want that he's been forced to put in the team? Uh, what's the new fella's name with the goatee from Monaco? Oh, Bakayoko. Bakayoko, he doesn't, he, do, he, I don't think he has any time for Bakayoko at all. I don't think, uh, he's brought in Rudiger and I'm not sure. Zappacosta looks alright. Yeah, Zappacosta, uh, Zappacosta um, but then you've got Drinkwater, who I, I don't get. Well, well, yeah. well, what was that transfer about? I don't, I don't get Danny Drinkwater for 25 million. I really oh. don't get that whatsoever. Um, and yeah, he wanted to bring in a striker, didn't he? And he, he wasn't that, you know, apart from Morata, he was Lukaku, wasn't it? Yeah. And it never happened. And I think that's going to cost him, but you wonder now what's going to happen next year. Cause he doesn't, he doesn't look particularly happy. You know, maybe I reckon he could be the new Italy boss. Maybe he'll go back to Italy. But he's already done that, you know, and he didn't, he didn't like not having the day to day stuff. Ah, I don't know, it's hard to know. Let's move on then to our, uh, the final Premier League match we want to have a look at. So sixth place, uh, Tottenham are taking on, uh, Brighton in 13th. Brighton have lost five out of eight away matches and, uh, yeah, that was the most kind of interesting stat. I could find their Spurs won their first Premier League game in five. Well, this started. is why we have to talk about them, you know. Um, uh, there was a stat before the game that Harry Kane scored. Uh, was it six and three games against them? And uh, again, the car on the way back, Martin was saying, "Yeah, four nil, mm. four nil to Spurs," because that was the, the score the last three times they faced. And there was a four goal margin, but five yeah, one this time. One, yeah. Um, I, I hope Spurs will find their way back now because they've got some good players. And they've got players who are start, you know, other players than Harry Kane who are starting to hit the, uh, hit the straps as well, like the South Korean lad, Son. Son, yeah. I really like him, you know, he's, he's a really good player. Um, Lorente got his first goal for the Spurs in midweek and I think that'll help his confidence. You need, you need, I mean, Lorente knows he's, he's only going to be back up, but you need someone who's like on the bench, ready to come on, who knows he can like make a vital contribution. Yeah. If needed. Yeah. To secure the win. Mm. Um admittedly they're playing Stoke, who, as we've already discussed, are just pants. Um but Brighton, they're not great away from home at all, like as you said. They're also without winning five. I think they're starting to find life a little bit hard in the top flight. Be interesting to see how the Brighton fans take to um this game because um there's someone I follow on Twitter and he said it's gonna be weird going to uh Wembley on a Wednesday night with Brighton and not like the, <laughs> you know, the, 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 um, the Jester hat and the rosette and whatever, you know, it's just yeah. an ordinary game. It's going to be interesting to see how they, how they handle that sort of thing, but I've got a lot of time for Chris Hewton and I hope, you know, that Brighton, I don't want Brighton to go down. I'd like he Brighton to stay up. start getting wins though. Well, this is it. Like I can't, I, 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 I doubt that they'd pull a trigger and, and, and fire him unless he went on a run of losing, you know, 10 or 15 games in a row because he did get them up. And, you know, you, you can see what he's trying to do, but it's just not working. I don't, I don't know, like, it's going to be hard for them to retract players as well in January. Well, it, it's, it's the thing is, it, I, it's the one thing I've always wondered, because like Stoke, I mean, how do you attract a player to Stoke? Money. Yeah, I mean, it, that's all there is, because it's yeah. like, that, that's it. Well, yeah. it. It's Stoke. It, it's it, like with Sunderland. That's why Sunderland had always had such a huge wage growth. No one wants to go to Sunderland. I suppose the other thing mm-hmm. with Stoke is like, you can finally prove you can do it on Stoke. You're Stoke on a wet <laughs> Tuesday night. Um, yeah, it's like, and Brighton, you know, Brighton's a, a 
well, it's one of the more cosmopolitan cities in uh, England. But it's not exactly, you know, yeah. it's not London, is it? It's not Manchester. I mean, even Birmingham. I, I'm proud to be from Birmingham, but it's hard to bring players there because it's like, it's <laughs> Birmingham. Yeah. You know, it's uh, like... So, no, would you, would, do you think uh, Spurs will cover the handicap? It's minus 1.75 or 1.91. Um, maybe. I'm not, I'm not totally convinced. Mm. Um, maybe. Um, it's a tough one to call. I mean, it's a, it's a big handicap that is to, to cover. I'm not sure about it. Again, it's, it's all about, it's all about who's fit. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Right, uh, we're going to... So the Champions League draw is just over a few minutes ago. I want to have a quick chat about that before we get back to... Uh, we're going to talk about the English week in the Bundesliga. So uh, we'll run quickly through these. Juventus Tottenham. Nice, huh? Tough draw for Spurs, that is. Yeah. I think this is um this is the proof of the pudding for them. Can they do it against the big European teams? Did it against Real Madrid, but beat Juventus, then yeah. Especially if they can beat them in Italy. Big, big draw for oh, them. Like no, me work. either. You know. It will be interesting though. I was just speaking to one of my uh, Italian friends there, a big Juventus fan, and he was saying that Juventus or so he was saying that Tottenham was one of the ones the they nobody wanted. No, no, nobody in Juventus wanted wanted it at all. They're on the list of people they really didn't want because everyone's you know scared of Harry Kane. And the uh, only good thing is that Daddy Ali is out of form. But you know these matches won't be played until what, February, so you know he'll be, he'll be, mm. surely he'll be back by then. And a lot of things are going to change between this and then. Um, I'm going to ask you though, who do you see going through? Okay, so what between? No, you just for this, we'll, we'll do each one between you and Spurs. Yeah. Juventus, I think. Juventus, sorry. Basel and City. <laughs> oh, yeah, super question. How many? How many? Um, Basel's a tough place to play. Um, I think they have a plastic pitch at Basel. St. Jacob's Park, is mm-hmm. it? Yeah, that's right. Um, but Basel are not going to do anything that the S has. No. I would have thought. I think that's going to be any, I think, I think Pep must be rubbing his hands with glee at that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they'll already be thinking about who they're getting in the next round. So they're going to win that. Porto and Liverpool. Um, I would normally back Liverpool, but I don't think it's the easy tie that it could be. Um, especially in Portugal. I, I'm sure that Porto are a tough place to uh, play in Portugal. Mm. Um, but yeah, it should be Liverpool. Uh, Seville then are at home to Man United. Um, don't Seville have like, haven't, haven't they had a great record since it turned out the boss had cancer? Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe you'll cure Well, no, then. so they got hammered against Real Madrid this weekend. Oh yeah, true. Five minutes. was a five and a half time, was it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's true. and Real Madrid with their second choice back line. Yeah, it's embarrassing for <clears throat> Seville. Um, should be a Manchester United win, but again, it's not. It's not like Barcelona. That's a tough, tough away time. Mm-hmm. But they should do them Old Trafford. Yeah, because they'll they'll go shut up shop, come back, win one or two nil, you know, and they'll march to the final like that and probably win. Ugh. Uh, so uh, the money bag tie of the round is Real Madrid and PSG. I'm going to call this PSG. Aha, uh-huh, are you? Yeah, I, I mean, you know my hatred for Spanish football anyway. <laughs> um, I just don't think Real Madrid have been that great shakes this year. And PSG, you know, you look at the wealth of talent they've got on their side, you know, you look at their front three. I I, I think in the part de France they should beat them and then... Is it it's to the Bar- Bernabeu first? Yeah, Bernabeu it? first, yeah. So as long as they can keep the Bernabeu leg fairly tight, then they should do them. But I'm I'm reminded of last year, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Barcelona, Barcelona yeah. yeah, and it's like was it five one yeah. at home and then six mm-hmm. one away? Nuts. Um, and I read, so, well, I've yeah. been referring to this quite a lot about how teams <clears> with <throat> little domestic competition can attack but they can't defend. And mm-hmm. I wonder, I wonder if it's going to be another one of those. It's going to be a case of who wins biggest at home. Yeah, yeah, could be. Hope so. Loads of goals. I don't mind. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shakhtar, Donetsk, and Roma is the next one. Um, should be Roma, but Donetsk, well, they don't play Donetsk, do they? Are they playing Kharkiv or Kiev? It's mm-hmm. going to be a tough one to play. Mm-hmm. Um, but Roma should be able to take that out. Chelsea, Barcelona. Um, I'll talk to Martin one. about this, and, um, if Chelsea can stop Barcelona from screwing on my goal, then, um, in the new camp it's going to be very interesting. Um, 
Messi, I read a stat, Messi in eight games has never scored against Chelsea. <laughs> uh, zero goals from 29 shots. Yeah, wasn't and he's there... the worst record he's got against any single club. Yeah, it, had, it had been Juventus. He had, he had never scored against Buffon, and then he scored two. Did you see the picture of Buffon this weekend? No, he didn't play again. It says right, he was okay, so Buffon was talking to um, a coach. I don't, can't remember which one it was. I mean, you know how... How they cover the mouth. Yeah. Except you covered it the wrong side so it could be lip red. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I don't get this whole don't want to be lip red thing. If it was me, I'd be bothered. It's it was something to do with about him playing next season, I think. Yeah. The last one then is uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, they'll be at home to the Schicktes in the first leg. Well, it should be Munich. It should be Bayern all the way, but I really, really, really would love the shit to start. Oh, There's gonna be a lot of Turkish fans in Munich, aren't there? Yeah. yeah Wouldn't you just look, would you not great. love to see Besiktas dump them out? Of course, yeah. See, I, I have no time for Bayern Munich at all. No, so, me either. No, they're me up either. there, they're up there, like most people hate Man United. For me, it's, it's Munich. I have no time for them. Um, yeah, I'd love to, and uh, Besiktas, it's, oh, the atmosphere in Munich would be amazing for that match. So many Turkish people living in, living in Germany, like, Class. Hello, are Bish- Bish- they popular in Turkey? Turk, Turk. Yeah, they are. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Um, before we get onto the Bundesliga, though, uh, about the, the Manchester derby, Mourinho, he doesn't, he's not learning at him, is he, Dan? Um, you he might keeps just, making the same mistake. You made this point earlier. I think you're right. He's, it's arrogance, isn't it? I think he did this with Chelsea, you know, as well. Now I think about it, is that you know he, he um. He's got this whole special one thing, you know, like, and he, he, you know, he, he's got this, like, set idea of how he's going to set up, and, you know, he beat, like, they beat Arsenal, it's like, vindication, but was it? Like you said, Arsenal weren't that bad, and De Gea was, like, having the game of his life, mm-hmm. and then they play Man City, and they came unstuck. Yeah. Okay, Man City are brilliant, but, but, you know, so Hampton showed that, you know, you can hold them for a long time, whereas Tam showed, you can you can do the same thing with West West Ham are very very unlucky not to get a, not to get a draw out of that they could have scored it with one of the last chances of the game I think I think the thing is as well that that Pep has shown is that Man City are adaptive mm. and that is like next level when when you can adapt to things on the fly make change make subtle changes to like swing the the the, the flow of the game yeah. in your favour mm-hmm. and I've got I wasn't really a fan of Pep before um. Before this season, but he's growing on me. He's grow He really is growing on me because you know he he, he seems to like. He seems to have um, the right attitude. He's, he talks. I mean, like he said, though people said the Spanish style of football wouldn't work in England. I'm proving that wrong, and I think mm, that's a bit a bit of an arsey thing to say. But yeah. I, like when I saw that clip of him, um, like showing Sterling how he wanted him to play. Like specifically showing him, yeah. and then you saw Sterling playing in the game, doing exactly what Pep showed him, scoring. You're like, yeah, you know, th- this is why he's a great coach, and he must be doing. You know, he, I, I, I'm sure he's doing the same thing. But against against Man United, he knows what Mourinho's going to do. Mourinho's too stuck in his ways. Mm-hmm. And he's able, to, like you said, Mourinho. He knew Mourinho wasn't going to do anything but part the bloody bus. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, there's no, no point even him playing the likes of Lukaku. Just take him off and just have, him, have another midfielder. Well, I had to laugh because I saw the BBC before the game saying, oh, is Lukaku the key? I was thinking, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why will you? Um, but someone, they were, so someone, they were, someone like Matic or Herrera is going to have much more of an impact on, on how a game is played out than Lukaku. Lukaku's a goal hanger. That's basically what he, what he does now. You know? And they were saying about how, um, the, 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 you've got to stop the wide men like Sane and Sterling and Young was just embarrassed mm. you know but mm. there you go if you have any betting questions you'd like to ask don't be shy get in touch with Patty Martin or Dan on Twitter ProTipster IRL ProTipster EN or ProTipster DAN or on Facebook at ProTipster UK Right, look, we're into the last, we're into the final furlong here then. We'll, uh, we want to cover a couple of Bundesliga matches. Um, we have, uh, let me get the name, <clears throat> 14th place, Mainz are taken on Dortmund. And you're back in Mainz here, aren't you, Dan? Yeah, I think it's the value bet of the weekend. So Mainz, one winning seven, but in the last five at home, they've won three times. Dortmund, without a winning seven, one winning five away. 
sacked uh, the manager, uh, Bosch, this weekend, brought in Peter Stoger, the uh, uh, Austrian manager, whose last job he was sacked by Cologne on the 3rd of December, and we all know what's happened to Cologne this season. Which, but it's interesting, because I was reading the fans don't hate him. The fans, like, were still, like, the, 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 the fans were okay with him. Because yeah. he'd been there for four years, and he'd done a fairly decent job, but they were just having a poor season. Yeah. Um, they lost the CEO, they lost, you know, um, a few months, a couple of months ago, but Dortmund are in an absolute hole at the moment. You know, they, they, and they're still fairly odds on that are 1.7. Yeah, and that's the thing, you saw, yeah. I'm looking at mine, so I'm thinking, is the man, are they gonna have this new manager bouncing, which well, I don't no, believe is a you, thing. You know what it is, I look up the head to head, and of the last, uh, last 10 games, um, mine's have only one win. They've won one, drawn one, lost eight. Mm. That's why the odds are. Maybe. So but anyway. Moses' home record is pretty decent. You know, three wins and five away. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Dortmund's one winning, uh, uh, sorry, three wins and five at home. Dortmund one winning five away. Um, and I was looking at the, the handicap, so I think you could get, um, m- mines plus a half, so mines to draw a win. Probably get well above even to that. That's, that's, no, that's one. No, no, I looked it up, it's a, it's a plus 0.75 at, 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 at evens. So, yeah, plus 7.5. Yeah, so yeah. it's even better than what Yeah, it's going to be better. Well, yeah. As I said, well above even. So, right. yeah, I, I would be looking at... Um, if I was brave, I'd go for mines to win, but mines plus a half. Mm-hmm. It's got to be worth a shot. Okay. Uh, 11th place Wolfsburg are taking on uh, Salzburg, or taking on Red Bull Salzburg. Red, Red Bull Leipzig. There's so many Red Bull teams now. Can I get them all mixed up? Red Bull Leipzig. But they're not called Red Bull. Rassenball Sports. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But, you know... They have nice Red Bull things on their t-shirts. <laughs> Jerseys. Um, overs have landed in 9 out of 16 home Wolfsburg matches. Um, Leipzig, they're, they're not out of it yet. They're only 5 points behind Bayern. Although Bayern are playing Cologne. 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 Are you sure it's 5? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was more than that. Yeah, summer, 25. And, uh, you know, they got to keep the pressure on here. Um... I think Leipzig have been found out a little bit. Um, well, maybe, maybe I, I've not seen much of them. Like, I, I'm just going by that, the, you know, the Besiktas result and, I don't know, um, I'm not convinced by them anymore. But, I don't, I, I've got to be honest with you, I don't, I, I don't know enough to be able to say on this game. I'm totally wrong, it's not five points. Eight oh, points. Yeah. Eight points. Knew eight it points. wasn't five. Sorry, listeners. Sorry, all the listeners are, We'll edit that bit out. I'll leave it in. I don't mind making mistakes. The last one then, Bayern, who are ahead by eight points, not five. Uh, They're playing bottom of of the table, Clone, who only have three points all season. And the odds, the odds are shocking, Dan. The odds are one point oh eight. That's going to be a case of how many are Bayern going to score. Well, you got to go to over four goals before you find that, and it's over even. So four or more goals. No, sorry. If they only score four goals, you don't even win. You just get your stake back. So they have to score five goals for you to win, and that's two point oh six. The hell with you, that. Yeah, you know, you know why that is because Cologne was three and a lot at the weekend and lost. <laughs> they are <laughs> abysmal. Awful. It just probably it has to be the worst performance by any Bundes team in the Bundesliga. Yeah, I think it is. Probably, yeah. huh? Probably awful. And and the only and the three points they got wasn't even from a win; it was one draw. So. No. Have we got time for one more thing? Go for it, yeah. So, I was reading about Inter's new favor, uh, new famous fan. Oh, who's this, Dan? Well, you know how you were saying that Inter um, had like a, a slightly... Um, no, not the best fan base. Yeah. Well, apparently one of their famous fans is none other than Kim Jong-un. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been to the San Siro to watch them well, <laughs> when he was a kid, well, when he was studying in Switzerland. And... I don't know, because I, uh, there was this Italian senator called Razzi. He was, and he actually wanted, he, he was the one who confirmed it, and he said, yeah, I wanted to take Paolo Dybala to North Korea as a solution to world peace. <laughs> the best Paolo bit Dybala is, Dybala there is a North Korean player playing in Italy right now. Yeah. Han Kwang Song, um, 19 year old striker at Perugia and Serie B on loan from Cagliari. He scored the first um, Serie A goal by a North Korean player last season for Gallery. 17, 14 Serie B games for Perugia. Not bad. Including a hat trick against, um, bottom of the table, I think, for Tucentella. 
Not bad at all. Yeah, it's, but it's like, I didn't know North Koreans were allowed out of the country. Yeah, 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 yeah. He must know someone, or someone knows someone. I wonder what does he do with his money? Do they have to, does he have to send back a lot of it to... I have no idea, but... Huh. Like, okay, so the, I, I, I can really go into it here because I know there are two kinds of Koreans. There's North Koreans born in Korea and North Koreans born in Japan who are known as Zainichi North Koreans. And Zainichis are normally allowed to move around. Hmm. But this guy was born in Pyongyang and this guy has gone to football academies, uh, outside of North Korea. He's been out in North Korea for quite some time. But he still plays for their national team. Ah, oh, he's got connections then. He must have connections. Ah, oh, yeah, something, something. I smell a rat here. He's 19 and he's banging him in his <laughs> Serie B. There you go. Today's, today's weird, weird stat for weird you. fact of the day. Right, look, we better uh, wrap things up then. So, Dan, remind people of where we can find you on the internet. You can find me um, on Twitter, at ProTips to Dan, uh, all one word. On Facebook, facebook.com slash ProTips to Dan, again, all one word. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes I'll pop up on ProTips 3M, but that's normally run by Martin, who's, uh, hopefully on a plane. And, uh, yeah, you can get me, uh, ProTipster IRL. And the song, Dan, the song at the start, I hope, dear listeners, that you got it. It was Magic Train by The Who, so I know it's a long time before your time, Dan. And mine as well. I don't even like The Who. I no, just wanted I to find something with a bus and a train. I'd go for Magic School Bus by Swerve Driver. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I looked up those lyrics. They were harder to get in. Anyway, look, we better finish up. Thanks everyone for, everyone for listening. You can subscribe to the Pro Tips for Football Show on iTunes or on Android Podcatchers as well. Give us a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up. And don't be shy about getting in touch as well. If you have any betting questions, football questions, uh, get us on Twitter and get in touch. Make sure and check out ProTipster.com for some amazing football tips. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily videos, previews, podcasts, and strategy videos as well. All right, we'll be back on Wednesday with another Combined 11. And on Thursday then as well for another look at the upcoming Premier League and European football fixtures. All right, enjoy the football. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster EN or ProTipster IRL. Bye.